80s, uh, the city uh, mandated that we become self-sufficient. And we did this early on, but it took a lot of volunteerism, both from the airport board and from the hangar tenants. And, uh, and out of that, we have, uh, I mean, we are self-sufficient. We, we carry our own insurance. We have our own trace service. We take care of all of our utilities. We mow all the grass. We do all the snow removal. We, uh, and we make our, make our own improvements. Uh, we actually run the airport. Now, I handle the, uh, uh, everybody on the board has, has duties. And my duties are the payables. I, uh, I uh, take care of most of the FAA contacts because I've been in the aviation business for 45 years. And so when I call them, they say, okay, what do you want to talk about? Uh, Kings Avionics or the Gardner Airport? You know, so, so I take care of that. I try to coordinate with the city in the state uh, we have underground storage tanks for fuel and if you've ever had those you know what that takes every month to, to get that job done and uh, Dale Rose who is not here he takes care of the receivables we have a hundred hangers out there and then we have people moving out and then we have to get other people to move in and and uh, Ray Doerr helps him with that and Ray also does our IT work out there. Dennis has uh, been our longtime secretary. He makes the minutes look right for us. So, and uh, and he takes care of the other airport maintenance too, along with Joe Spillett. So, so that's that's kind of who our airport board is. We uh, we have one part-time employee. Anybody that's been around Gardner for a few years will know the Hogravers, and Jim Hograver is our part-time employee. He, mows our grass, he takes care of hangar door problems, uh, he just does anything that we need to have done out there. So uh, that's kind of what I wanted to do in the, as an, the lead off and if we can get uh, Matt up here, he's got a presentation. Very good. Right. Thank you, Dave. <coughs> good evening, Mayor, City Council. Um, my name is Matt Jacobs, I'm with H.W. Lochner and I'm the team lead for our Aviation Services Group. I'm also a resident of Gardner, and so I got to know the community and the airport uh, extremely well. Lived here with my family for 14 years. Um, what Dave asked for us to do in talking to, to Brian was to give a little recap of the history of what's going on at the airport as far as past projects and improvements that have been made, um, and also to kind of give a idea of what's in store for the future as far as planning projects and working with the FAA. Okay. Which one? Right button. Right, right button? Right. There you go. A um, little past history here is airport development um, in 1930s and 40s. Um, the Gardner Airport was established as an emergency landing air area, mail route, and then a naval air station training facility. In the 50s and 60s, the military surplus quit claimed the airport to the city of Gardner. In the 1970s, a chip seal was done on the east-west runway 1826, and the crosswind turf runway 321 was constructed. In the 80s, terminal area expansion and improvements were completed. And in the 90s, significant airfield and terminal area, terminal area expansion was also completed. Um, that brings us to the 2000s, the present, which is setting the stage for the future roles. Um, we've been involved as the airport's consultant since about the late 1990s. So we've assisted with a handful of projects that have involved funding through KDOT Division of Aviation, Federal Aviation Administration, and we've also helped with some projects that the Gardner Airport Board themselves have funded themselves. Um, 2000 to present, um, a master plan was completed and approved by the FAA in August or October of 2000. Uh, that document pretty much set the stage for the next 15 to 20 years as far as what types of improvements. It also looked at the history of the airport. It looked at uh, um, economic benefits and other things included within that document. In 2002, the east and west Key Hanger taxi lanes were reconstructed. Um, that was funded through a grant from the Kansas Department of Transportation Division of Aviation. In 2004, the, the airport um, funded the construction of a 20-unit nested key hanger, and shortly after that was completed, the taxi lane serving the hangar was also constructed. 
land acquisition project, this was funded through the FAA um, with two tracks acquired, track two in 2002 and track three acquired in 2005, and that was for runway protection zone protection of the north-south runway there, north of 175th. In 2007, um, a KDOT grant was issued for the overlay and remarking of runway 18, uh, 826. And in 2010, a master plan update was also completed to bring things back up to current standards and to relook at the history and the forecasting that was included within that document. In 2008 and 2010, um, Track 4 was acquired down there near 56th Highway. Um, again, that was for run runway protection zone control. Um, there was one track, it was a voluntary transaction. It had come up for sale on the market and it was shown in the master plan as needing to be acquired. So we assisted with the acquisition of that and then the, the property was cleared in 2010. An environmental assessment was done um, under an FAA funded project as well. Um, those are good for about five years, and so it was time to relook at things to see if there was any changes to the current criteria that was um, previously um, analyzed, and then that document updated and submitted to FAA for their approval. We did a grading for stormwater drainage improvements. That was a recent project that was completed um, about a year ago. Um, there were some ponding conditions on the airport, which is uh, considered a wildlife attracted by FAA, and so they provided funding at 90% reimbursement to do the construction associated with cleaning that up, installing some storm um, drainage structures, and regrading the site to, to facilitate runoff. Um, the current project um, that we're about to wrap up, or I'd say is close to being wrapped up, is the acquisition of what's considered the Sizemore property down at the, again, the south end of the airport for runway protection zone control. Um, that is a rather large tract, and the so everything's been more or less completed and the paperwork submitted to the FAA for grant consideration. That's pretty much what's been done um, 2000 to present. I know the airport also um, did an expansion of their parking apron and they went ahead and just handled that in-house. Um, get a contractor out there to expand the asphalt parking lot towards the east. Um, they've done various maintenance upgrades throughout the years. Um, and then on the land side side of it too, they've developed that park out by the airport. So there's been other types of projects <coughs> that have been completed by the airport themselves um, that are in addition to what's been funded through a um, program such as the FAA or KDOT. This is considered the airport layout drawing. Um, and this is what was also done as part of the master plan. Um, anytime a project is completed, FAA asks that this document also be updated to reflect as built conditions. It more or less outlines and maps future improvements to your airport. Um, it's reviewed by FAA to make sure it's in compliance with um, um, design criteria for this size of the facility, um, and ultimately they sign off on it. In order to do a future project out at the airport utilizing FAA funds, it must be depicted <coughs> on the approved airport layout drawing. Every year FAA asks the sponsors to complete a update to their capital improvement program. Um, we've assisted with that effort in the years past um, and it's more or less the wish list that the sponsor of the airport would like to see considered for future funding. Um, and so what we came up with earlier this year, they usually do about mid-February, it was shortly after that when things were turned in, um, was to continue focusing on acquiring property down at the south end of the north-south <laughs> runway for runway protection um, zone control. Um, that's planned 2015. Um, again, there's no guarantee that that's when that's going to happen, but if they ask the sponsor to at least indicate in the document as to what fiscal you would like to see that considered for. Um, again, there's a second track that's down there, which is the Gardner property um, that is within the protection zone and is shown as future acquisition. Once that would be acquired, um, then the whole area through the Sizemore property and the other two tracks um, could be entertained as a possible um, demolition and clearing project. Along the western side of the airport property, that's building restriction line control and FAA asks that the um, sponsors have control over that as well. Um, so that would be looked at as a future project, um, possibly you know, several years out. Um, and then off the um, west end, I'm sorry, the east end of the crosswind runway as well. We did a portion of the 
drainage that we could fund through current funding that was available at the time um, there was a design report that was done